Hollywood, Colgate Tooth Powder presents The Mel Blanc Show, written by Mac Benoff, with Mary Jane Croft, Joe Kearns, Hans Conry, Jim Backus, the sportsman, Victor Miller and his orchestra, and starring the creator of the voice of Bugs Bunny. Mm. What's up, Doc? <laughs> yes, Colgate Tooth Powder, for a breath that's sweet and teeth that sparkle, brings you The Mel Blanc Show, with Mel playing his new character, Zuki. Hello, what you, Hello, what <laughs> Hi. And starring himself in person, Mel Blank. Hi, folks. Ugga, ugga, boo, ugga, boo, boo, ugga. You call me to powder. Keep smiling just right. Use it each morning and use it each night. It cleans your teeth, makes breath so sweet. Use Colgate Tooth Powder. Want teeth that sparkle and dazzle, a breath that's fresh and sweet? Then try Colgate Tooth Powder, for the new all-purpose Colgate Tooth Powder cleans your teeth and sweetens your breath. Yes, this new all-purpose tooth powder produces an amazingly rich, active foam that's marvelously effective. Every time you brush your teeth with this new all-purpose Colgate Tooth Powder, your whole mouth feels clean, sweet, fresh. Your teeth regain their natural sparkle. It's been proved in seven cases out of ten that Colgate tooth powder instantly stops unpleasing breath that originates in the mouth. And as for cleaning, you can depend on Colgate tooth powder revealing the natural brilliance of your teeth. Yes, Colgate tooth powder, the new all-purpose tooth powder, does everything you can expect or ask of a dentifrice. Try Colgate tooth powder today for teeth that sparkle and a breath that's sweet. Use Colgate tooth powder. June is the month of graduations. New graduates wondering what kind of jobs they're going to get are eager to get out of school. Old graduates who have the jobs are wondering how they can get back into school. Unable to do so, the old grads content themselves by looking at their old yearbooks. In Mel Blanc's little town, we find Tom Jones and Shirley Brown looking at Tom's yearbook, and Shirley is saying, Tom, why are you looking so surprised in this graduating picture? Well, I had just been informed by the dean that I received the highest marks of the class. And Dorothy Lenahan says to her boyfriend, Oh, Bill, why do you look so surprised in this graduating picture? I was just given a scholarship to Cornell. And in Mel Blank's fix it shop, where Betty Colby is proudly looking at a picture of Mel Blank sitting on the library steps in his cap and gown, Betty is saying, Mel, why do you look so surprised in this graduating picture? I had a hole in my pants and those steps were cold. <laughs> So they continued turning the pages in the yearbook until Betty said, Now look at that picture of the freshman class. <laughs> Who's that funny-looking anemic kid with the stupid face and the buck teeth? <laughs> That's me. <laughs> oh, guys, those were the good old days. The three R's, reading, writing, arithmetic. There should be four R's. Four R's? Yeah, reading, writing, arithmetic, and a raise for the teachers. <laughs> Betty? Look at the picture of this fellow. Remember him, Bernie Henderson? He always used to throw spitballs. Never did anything but throw spitballs. Did he ever mount anything? I'll say he did. He's a guy who invented moisturized cigarettes. <laughs> and, and this fellow on the left, Joe Hansen, he was a monitor. He used to shout and make everybody stand up. If anyone came in a second late, he'd slam the door in their face. Oh, what's he doing now? He's driving a bus in Los Angeles. <laughs> and there's Sam Long, the class dunce. He used to think he was a chicken. Oh, that's odd. You ever hear from him? No, but every once in a while he sends me a half a dozen eggs. <laughs> uh, matter of fact, I called him up the other day to thank him. Oh, uh, what'd he say? <laughs> <laughs> well, Mal, you weren't much of a student, were you? What? Why, Professor Baker said I had a wonderful head for science. Well, they even wanted me at Harvard. Oh? Why didn't you go? I told you, they didn't want me, they just wanted my head. <laughs> What's that little poem under your picture in the yearbook? Oh, my teacher wrote it in. Listen. To Mel Blank, you'll become a great success. You'll have power and be strong. You'll have a million dollars. You should live so long. <laughs> oh, Betty, look, here comes your father. 
Hello, Betty. Hello, Father. Hello, Mr. Colby. <clears throat> Say, you're looking very happy today. Yes, today's a big day for me. The principal of Monroe High School has asked me personally to secure the speaker for the graduation ceremonies. And I've been fortunate enough to obtain the famous Chinese philosopher, Dr. Tao. Oh, gosh, that's wonderful, Mr. Colby. It just shows that through perseverance and clean living, a humble education, a man can stand and fight for the better things in life and bring an entire nation to realize right from wrong. Why, Mel, that's beautiful. Where did you hear it? On the Lone Ranger. Ew. <laughs> well, never mind. Who knows how the school will reward me? Why, it's possible they may give me an honorary degree. Why, they may even go so far as to dedicate a room to me. Gosh, what an honor. Every time the students wash their hands, they'll see your name. What? <laughs> you know, you young people of today are too impertinent. Why, in my day, it was like in Lincoln's time, we appreciated more things. We used to walk 12 miles to school and 12 miles back. Yeah, and I can just see the graduation. Instead of a diploma, they give you a box of Dr. Scholl's foot pads. Oh. <laughs> I can't waste any time with you. Dr. Tao is arriving at the station. I've got to meet him. Holy smoke, it's half past four. I've wasted so much time with you, I won't be able to make it. And there'll be nobody to meet him. Well, Mr. Colby, don't worry. My assistant, Zuki, is helping out a friend who's sick. Uh. He's working at the station as a train announcer. I'll call Zuki up and tell him to meet the doctor. Oh, that's wonderful, Mel. Thanks. Well, you see, Mr. Colby, I always come through when you need me. Give me that phone. <laughs> It's the it's the it's the train leaving on tracks. It's 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 train leaving on tracks. It's it's the it's the it's the train leaving on tracks. It's 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 train. Never mind the train left. Gee, um, Mel asked me to meet Doctor Tao. I wonder. If we... oh, 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 there he is. Oh, uh, d- 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 Doctor Tao. Uh, how do you do? Did you call me, young man? Uh, yeah, I, I represent Monroe High School. Uh, d- d- Doctor Tao, I'm here to extend formal greeting. Uh, 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 Doctor Tao, I- I- I'm here to officiate. Uh, 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 Doctor Tao, I- 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 I'm here to wheat well, wheat well, wheat well. Doctor Tao, it's that doctor. What's up, Doc? <laughs> <laughs> rather clever. Are you going to take me to the high school? Oh, sure. I'm, I've got a private limousine. I'll, I'll call a taxi. I'll, I'll get the mayor's car. I'll, I'll <laughs> hop in that push cart. I'll push you. <laughs> Young man, do you realize I am a doctor of philosophy? Oh, oh I'm sorry. Then you push me. <laughs> Why, this is an outrage. You can tell Mr. Colby I've been highly insulted. I'm getting right back on this train and leaving. Good day. Oh, yeah, but, uh, but, Doc, you, you can't go. Uh, gosh, Mr. Colby will break every b- 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 bone in Mel's b- 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 Every b- b- bone. Every b- b- bone. B- b- bone. B- 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 uh. <laughs> bone voyage. Hmm, that's odd. Suki isn't back with Dr. Tao. I wonder if anything happened. Oh, here comes that conceited Bo Brummel, Hartley Benson. Hello, Hartley. Gee, the sun is sure bright today. Mel, that's merely thousands of women shining with radiance because they've just seen great, big, adorable me. (laughs) In fact, I'm such a beautiful bundle of bliss, I could give myself a great, big kiss. Benson, why are you so conceited? Mel, the girls make me so. In a recent survey taken among the graduates of Vassar for the sport that they like the best, 10% chose swimming, 12% said canoeing, and 78% said hotly bensoning. <laughs> hotly bensoning? What's that? It's like night baseball, only it's played with the lights out. <laughs> Neil, when I went to college, I was the center of attraction. Oh, I don't believe you ever went to college, Hartley. Oh, no. Mel, you should have seen me at my graduation. All the graduates wore their finest clothes, but all eyes were on me. What were you wearing? My midriff cap and gown. (laughs) I was such an outstanding student, they awarded me an LLD. An LLD? Yes. Lovely, luscious, and divine. (laughs) 
This year, I went back to my alma mater to make a speech to all the girl graduates. In five words, I gave those girls the key to complete and lasting happiness. What were the words? Webster, 9890. <laughs> What's that? It is my phone number. Oh. <laughs> then I gave those girls their diplomas, and they looked so surprised. Oh, naturally. It was the first time anyone ever got a sheepskin from a jackass. <laughs> If you're going to take that... I... <laughs> Makes me very happy to tell you that I was at the station and I saw Zuki make such a fool of himself that Dr. Tao isn't going to appear at the graduation exercises. What? Yes, he got back on the train and left. And I'm leaving too. Goodbye, you buffoon. I'm so lovable and grand. Tomorrow I'm asking myself for my hand. So long, Mel. They see me. <laughs> He's the only one I know who has two telephones in his house so he can call himself up and ask for a date. <laughs> Gosh, I'm in terrible trouble. When Mr. Colby finds out that Dr. Tao isn't showing up, he'll take my head and twist it around backwards. Gee, that's not so bad. Now I'll be able to see where I'm coming from. <laughs> Your teeth makes breath so sweet. Use Colgate tooth powder. Teeth that sparkle, a breath that's fresh. Yes, Colgate tooth powder, the all-purpose Colgate tooth powder, cleans your teeth and sweetens your breath. Colgate tooth powder creates a rich, lively, pleasant-tasting foam that really cleans. Your whole mouth feels fresh and sweet. It's been proved in seven cases out of ten... Colgate tooth powder instantly stops unpleasing breath that originates in the mouth. And when it comes to cleaning your teeth, this all-purpose Colgate tooth powder gives dazzling results, reveals the natural brilliance of your teeth. Colgate tooth powder does everything a dentist should do. That's why it's an all-purpose tooth powder. Use Colgate tooth powder for teeth that sparkle and a breath that's sweet. Use Colgate tooth powder. Now here's Victor Miller and his orchestra, and this can't be love. Blank, who is behind the proverbial eight ball again, where he almost always resides as a permanent tenant. 
It seems that Mr. Colby expected an honorary degree because he had obtained the services of the Chinese philosopher, Dr. Tao, for the high school graduation exercises. But Mel's interference through his assistant, Zuki, caused Dr. Tao to cancel his speaking engagement. Now we find Mel in his fix-it shop a little worried. Gosh, if that's Mr. Colby and he finds I'm here, he'll kill me. Uh, uh, hello, Mel Blank's fix the job. You bend it, we mend it. Uh, who is this, please? Oh, Mr. Colby? Oh, I'm so sorry. Mel Blank just left town. Oh, where did he go? Uh, uh, Holland. <laughs> well, uh, they got a leak in the dike, and he's got the only thumb that fits. <laughs> uh, uh, goodbye. Off smorgasbord. <laughs> Gosh, he sounded angry. If he catches me, I'll be smorgasbord. Oh, here comes my lodge president, Mr. Cushing. Maybe he'll be able to help me out. Hello, Mel. <laughs> Greetings, mighty potentate. How's your little helpmate? Mel, when you're married to a woman like my wife, the word is help. She's got a new thing now, Mel. Before she goes to bed, she puts an ice pack on her head and rubs her face with alcohol. I tell you, Mel, it's like sleeping next to a Mickey Finn. <laughs> Last night, she came over and kissed me. You want to know something, Mel? Yeah? I wish it were a Mickey Finn. <laughs> what a woman. Last night, we had an argument. She said to me, John, if I hear another word, I'll die. Well, what do you do? Turned on Gabriel Heater. <laughs> what a face. Well, the other day, I put a picture of my wife in my wallet. Now, there was a $1 bill and a $5 bill in it. I looked in my wallet this morning. You know what happened? What? George Washington was hiding in Lincoln's beer. <laughs> the other night, we were getting ready to go to one of those old-fashioned costume balls. She was putting on a bustle, and she said, Oh, John, help me on with this bustle. String me up. Come on, John, string me up. <laughs> Jeb, what a temptation. <laughs> I'm telling you all this. It's just that I've got no one to talk to. Gosh, mighty potentate, if you think you've got troubles, listen to mine. On account of me, Dr. Tao won't speak at the high school graduation, and now Mr. Colby will scalp me. Oh, don't worry, Mel. You can always borrow my wife's toupee. <laughs> now, wait a minute, Mel. You're good at impersonations. Why don't you disguise yourself as Dr. Tao? Oh, but disguises are pretty tough to get away with. What are you talking about, Mel? For 50 years, my wife has been disguising herself as a human being. <laughs> Gee, maybe it will work. Sure, and you'll thank me for it. Well, I got to go now, Mel. Uh, where are you going, Mighty Potentate? Well, Mel, I can do one of two things. I can go to the movies and see Cheyenne, or I can go home and look at Death Valley. <laughs> Gee, the mighty potentate gave me a great idea. All I have to do is disguise myself as Dr. Tao and say a few words at the graduation. Now to talk Mr. Colby in to let, let me do it. Mel Blank, I ought to massacre you for what you've done. Now this ridiculous idea of impersonating Dr. Tao. Well, Mr. Colby, it's either I do that or you don't get your honorary degree. Yeah, well... But do you think you can get away with it? Oh, sure. Listen to this. Hola, ma. La pom tang toy hola. What does that mean? Two chow mein hold the noodles. <laughs> Don't forget, Mr. Colby, the store next to my fix-it shop is a Chinese restaurant. Mm. Well, I suppose I have no alternative. All right, get your disguise and remember this. Bung dao gao mel blanky conga disca. <laughs> Well, uh, what's that? If Mel Blank foul things up, he'd join Honorable Ancestor. <laughs> Mr. Colby, the graduation exercise is about to start. Now, where is Dr. Tau? But Don't worry. <laughs> oh, don't worry. No, no, no. He, he's, uh... He's coming right from his fix-it shop. I mean, uh, he's coming right from the station as soon as he fixes himself up. 
Oh, here comes a very distinguished Chinese-looking gentleman now. That must be he. Yes, it's he. No, it's him. <laughs> so he, you're right. <laughs> Dr. Tao, allow me to present the principal of Monroe High, Mr. Flyshacker. Uh, Dr. Tao, I've been preparing for this moment. As you say in China, ni hao bu hao. Thank you. And as we say in China, egg fu yang. <laughs> But egg foo young is something you eat. I know. Last night, my wife served me egg foo young. Me get very sick. Why? Egg was foo and not too young. <laughs> uh, uh, Dr. Tao, if I may ask, uh, what is your first name? Uh, uh, Tingling. Tingling? Yes, mother was frightened by good humor, man. <laughs> Uh, Dr. Chow, I've always been very interested in your customs. Now, tell me, do you always eat with chopsticks? Uh, no, me heavy eater. Use golf clubs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, me make a joke. <laughs> oh, very little joke, yeah. Yes, uh, uh, Dr. Now, <laughs> you're, you're a famous philosopher, and I'd like to ask you one thing. What is your opinion of life? A uh, which issue? <laughs> well, we Chinese always say one picture worth 10,000 words. Really? Uh, you want to buy postcards? <laughs> uh, my advice to you is develop big stomach. No, big stomach, why? Well, Confucius say man with big stomach also has something to fall back on. <laughs> That's what he say. Mm. Uh, Dr. Chow, tell me, uh, how do you think our system of education compares with yours? Oh, big difference. In China, when you're smart, you go to college and get diploma. In America, when you're smart, you go to pre a quiz program and get refrigerator. <laughs> Infinite wisdom packed into a few words. Uh. Oh, yes, yes, I make a mistake on the words, too, yes. Uh, by the way, uh, what, what university did you attend? Oh, I went to a very famous co-ed college in a Chinese city. Peking? Oh, no, when co-eds are passed by me, take a good look. <laughs> oh, me very good scholar in China. Uh, just take examination. No have pen. Use goose feather. Uh, goose feather? Yeah, but what trouble I have using goose feather. I couldn't get one answer down. Why not? Paper, too ticklish. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I think... Well, students, the students have all taken the seats now. So let's go on stage and I shall introduce you. Boys and girls of Monroe High! <laughs> Thank heavens, Mel, for once one of your impersonations helped Father. Well, I'm glad he got us the honorary degree. And Father will be home with it any minute, Mel. Don't you think I ought to get off your lap? Uh, no, Betty. Yes, Confucius say, man with girl on lap is like bread without yeast. What do you mean? He don't want to rise. <laughs> <laughs> This is Mel Blank saying thanks for listening. Good night, and either the either the that's all, folks. This is Buddy Easton reminding you that Colgate Tooth Powder for a breath that's sweet and teeth that sparkle brings you the Mel Blank Show every Tuesday night at this time. Be sure to join us again next Tuesday night for more fun with Mel and the people you meet in Mel Blank's Fix It Shop. Say hello to Halo Shampoo for naturally bright and beautiful hair. Remember, even finest soaps and soap shampoos hide the natural luster of your hair with dulling soap film. But Halo Shampoo contains no soap, therefore leaves no dulling soap film. Even in hardest water, Halo makes oceans of rich, fragrant lather, quickly banishes loose dandruff and dirt. Halo needs no lemon or vinegar in. Say hello to Halo and goodbye to dulling soap film. Get Halo Shampoo at any cosmetic counter. <laughs> This is PBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.